Here at Apple, our most ingenious and lucrative invention often gets overlooked. We call it the pentalobe screw. It's the screw that screws you. The pentalobe screw is a screw in the base of the iPhone, and pretty much it's just there to stop people from opening the phone. Well, what would happen if I tried to repair this myself? It will try and pry up the antenna connector mm -hmm. here. You pry up the battery. That'll lift all these pads off the off the logic board here. And what happens if if you do that at home? Well, then it's stuffed. Okay. And can you repair that then? No, it's not. It really is stuffed. Hmm. You can't. No. Why do you think um, products like this are difficult to repair? I think Apple doesn't want them repaired. I think that they make them difficult, especially so that people will buy new ones. Why are our products so difficult to repair? We call it a business model, and it follows in a great tradition. It's called planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence is the deliberate design of products to limit their lifespan. It all started in the 1930s when manufacturers joined forces to ensure light bulbs lasted no more than a thousand hours. And by the 1950s, companies were realising they could do this with all kinds of things. Nylon stockings used to be strong enough to tow a car. But then the engineers were asked to weaken them so women would buy more pairs and men would buy more tow bars. <laughs> Soon manufacturers were doing this with all kinds of things, putting cheap, flimsy plastic parts in washing machines and putting heat-sensitive parts in places where they'd get hot. The practice was never widespread, but it wasn't uncommon either. Instead of consumers repairing things, it became normal to replace them. And it's still happening today. Just imagine if everything worked like that. So what's the problem? My husband can't see. Hmm. We recommend you get a new husband. Uh... Oh, it's okay. We have new models. Oh, great! I like the green one. The green one's very popular. Oh. Today, the products we buy encourage us to get rid of them. Indicator bristles on toothbrushes tell you to stop using them. Razors with indicator strips tell you to change blades, even though the strip doesn't know how blunt the razor is. Even pillows tell us that they want to be thrown out. <gasps> the door pillow! No! Oh. Printer cartridges that demand to be replaced when they're 40% full. Printers that give you an error message after a certain number of pages. But now there's an even better way of getting people to replace their old stuff. And it's not making old products unusable. It's making people not want to use them. Throwing away perfectly functional items just because they've gone out of style. In 2008, Australians threw away 16.8 million televisions and computers. Most of them still worked. All of them contained toxic material. Only 10% were recycled, and those discarded made up 70% of the heavy metals in our landfill. You weren't supposed to clap that. Australians have more than 22 million mobile phones at home that they no longer use. And the average handset's used for just 18 months. It's not the engineers who make things obsolete now, it's the marketers. We live in an age of psychological obsolescence. It's by no means the only one, but what's a good example of psychological obsolescence? We call it the iPad. Inside the first iPad is a mounting that seems specifically designed to hold a camera just like the one in MacBooks. But when the iPad came out with no camera, cynics speculated it seemed to be deliberately held back for the iPad 2. And no wonder that early adopters of the iPad 3 whined so much, it was superseded after just seven months by the iPad 4. At this rate, we're building the most stylish, easy to use mountain of landfill ever. Which is why governments around the world are introducing product stewardship laws to make companies more responsible for their waste. And we've got product stewardship laws in Australia too. They came in in 2011. 
It's designed to work voluntarily, but each year products that might possibly be regulated can be named by the Environment Minister. So how good are Australia's product stewardship rules? It is a, a defensible act. I really would like the decisions to be made on the level of environmental impact. But it's not just up to industry. It's also up to us as consumers. I would certainly urge people not to keep switching over models uh, because they've bought a digital TV and someone's brought out some new, slightly improved uh, system. Product stewardship legislation might encourage manufacturers to build more durable products. But it won't stop people trading in their fully functioning products for the newer model. That's up to us. So why not try sticking with the older, less cool product? As is.